he also has a case for greatest fighter, pound for pound, who ever lived. Think about, by the way, I, I don't think he wins that argument. Sugar Ray Robinson is safely ensconced in that position. But Henry Armstrong, Muhammad Ali, Harry Greb, Sam Langford, Floyd Mayweather, Pernell Whitaker, whoever else you want to mention, put Pacquiao's resume up to those guys. Bill James, the great baseball sabermetrician, um, had a way of ranking baseball players that I came across as a kid and thought, that's really smart. You have to rank them at their best and then also over the course of their careers. Because when you have that argument, are you talking about who accomplished the most or what heights did they reach? What peak did they reach? Take either for Pacquiao. Take his peak. Was it at 140 pounds when he obliterated Ricky Hatton, Miguel Cotto, and then Oscar De La Hoya, though that was at 147? Was that Pacquiao's peak? Because remember, that's when the Mayweather-Pacquiao hype actually reached fever pitch. Oh, my God. These are two of the best fighters we've ever seen. And they're both in their primes, in the same weight class, at the same time. We have to see that fight. So Pacquiao's peak was just about as good as anyone in history. Now, I'd have favored Mayweather back then. He's the naturally larger fighter. And that's the point. When you talk about pound for pound, if a fighter moves up out of his natural weight class and can still compete with the best who ever did it. What does that mean about the quality of that fighter's prime, pound for pound? And then when you look at the career accomplishments, Pacquiao, as a 40-year-old, just beat, as I mentioned, the third best welterweight in the division, except really Pacquiao's the third best welterweight in the division. But do you realize he turned pro as a 16-year-old pro? Not even five feet tall, not even 100 pounds? and won his first lineal title a couple of years later as a flyweight, didn't turn pro as a flyweight, won the lineal championship of the world and then skipped up a couple weight classes and started tearing through divisions, was a late-minute replacement against Lelo Ladwaba, who was considered a guy on the rise on pound-for-pound -pound list, top 10 type, maybe a heavy favorite. Pacquiao destroyed him in such a way, we wondered, what could he do against Marco Antonio Barrera? Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Barrera may be a little long in the tooth, but he's still one of the best ever. Pacquiao, what he did to Barrera was scary, the way he dominated Barrera. It's the kind of fight that I'll never forget watching. Oh, my God, I've rarely seen a performance like that. Had a great series of fights with the still great Eric Morales. I mean, when you think about what Pacquiao did from flyweight to 154 pounds, from a teenager till 40 years old, and when you consider the heights he reached, you're talking about certainly one of the best pound-for-pound -pound fighters of all time. I believe, considering the fact that he's a much naturally smaller fighter than Mayweather, a better pound-for-pound -pound fighter than Floyd Mayweather, and actually a guy who has a case, whether you think he'd win it or lose it, he has a case. He could submit his resume and say, I want consideration as the best fighter who's ever lived. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.